good day. This is a video on the different numbers that we use in our school system and these names and symbols will pop up all along the way. If we don't know what each one of them means, we don't understand in the definitions and everything what it is. So let us look at them separately and then together and then after that we will have a few videos on notation where this is used. Enjoy. The first one is natural numbers. The symbol is a capital letter N. That's natural numbers. The next one is whole numbers with the symbol N with a little north at the bottom. Then we have integers that is represented by a Z. Then we have Q, seldom used, but then it is rational numbers, which is often used. Then we have irrational numbers with a Q with a little one in the air. Then we have real numbers, which we use R for as a symbol. And then non-real numbers that we don't have an official um, letter that we're using in our school system because non-real numbers is not part of our syllabus, although it pops up here and there. We must understand the word non-real. The first number system then is natural numbers. That is the numbers that aren't, comes naturally to us. That's numbers we've been using since grade one. So that's the numbers one, two, three, and so on. Please remember just something for interest sake. Um, we have this point commas breaks numbers loose from each other. And these dots over here means it goes on. The average person knows that, but I'm going to mention it as we go. The next system is the whole numbers. It actually tells you what it is. It is the natural numbers plus naught. You can see it written over there. So it gives you naught and then one and then two. And we go on like that. So that is a friend of the natural numbers. It's got the same N. It's got this naught here that tells us there's also a naught with the natural numbers. So it's not that difficult. The word all numbers catches off guard, but that's it. The next number system is integers. It involves the numbers we already had and all the negative numbers that comes in now. Which is then minus 1, minus 2, in the other direction. The last three sets of numbers are rational numbers indicated by a Q. I'm going to show them, give it a shortcut. It's fractions. Irrational numbers, which will write to the Q with a little one in the air, and then real numbers. We're going to um, indicate them and explain them separately to you because they're not as easily to be written as these. So here we go. Before we get to the words and the symbols of these last three names, we first need to understand what where numbers fall. So what we have here is we have our integers, there's minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and it goes on, of course, in both directions. So those are loose numbers that we have that we call the integers. But to put fractions in between of them in an orderly fashion is a little bit more complicated. So what I did is I broke it up a little bit. So between 0 and 1, we will find a half, and then two halves, and then one and a half, which is three halves, and then four halves. So in between 0 and 1, there are other numbers. So far, just 1. And between minus 1 and 0, there's another number, minus half. Also between 0 and 1, we can find 0. And then a third, a little bit down the line, 2 thirds, and then 3 thirds, which is 1 again. 1 and a third, 1 and 2 thirds, and 2. So in between here, we've got the third, a half, a third so far. 1 and a third, 1 and a half, 1 and 2 thirds, and then 2. So there are more numbers coming in between these numbers. Also, between 0 and 1, we can find 0 is here and 1 is here. We can find a quarter over there, 2 quarters over there, or which is a half again, and then 3 quarters, and then we get our 1, 1 and a quarter, 1 and a half again, 1 and 3 quarters, and then 2 here again. So there is more and more and more and more numbers coming in between everywhere here, and those numbers we haven't mentioned yet. Also, between 0 and 1, we can find a fifth and two fifths and three fifths and four fifths and five fifths and one and one fifth and so on and on the left hand side minus a fifth minus two fifths so there is more and more and more numbers coming over here i think you are getting the idea the last one down here this is naught and this is one like up here but you can get one tenth two tenths three tenths and on this side minus one tenth minus two tenths so in between here there are more and more and more and more numbers that we haven't mentioned so far if you look at this bottom number line then that's where our original integers were minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. But in between of them, we already now got 10 different little numbers between 1 and 2, and between 0 and 1, there's also 10. 
and then there's more and more in between of them. So there are a lot of numbers that we haven't mentioned yet that we're going to use now. So the real numbers now will be all the numbers that we mentioned under integers plus all the numbers in between. All of them combined becomes real numbers. There's no way of indicating it other than explaining it to you. I remember it this way. It's like really all the numbers in the world together that we know and that we've ever heard about up to this stage. If you could imagine that you put all these number lines on top of this one, with all the fractions fitting in in between, you will find all these little numbers in between, and then it's not even everybody we wanted to mention. So there will be more like hundreds and thousands and things like that. And that was the purpose of these number lines, these number lines. The last two group of numbers we're going to mention is the irrational numbers and the rational numbers. I always start with the irrational numbers because there's fewer of them, and automatically what's left over will be rational. According to me, in the, inside these irrational numbers, there are three groups of numbers. Easy to find, so we can almost break it down to three, three numbers. I'm going to show you the three different numbers. The first one is pi and pi alone in that group. I'll come back to him now. Before we do the second group, which I wrote over here, please stop the video and fetch your calculator. Any calculator that can do these sums that I wrote down here. Please plug this number into your calculator and see what the answer is that pops up. The answer will be one of the following two. Either it stays square root of 5 or if you change it to decimals it's 2,23. Now this is the catch. If a square root does not work out, in other words gives us a nice answer like I'll explain to you now, like square root of 4 gives you a 2, square root of 9 gives you a 3. These don't work out. It gives you an answer, but with decimals that we don't know where this is going. This decimals is just going on and on and on. So that's what's special about all of these. Let's do the next one in the calculator, please. This one now. This cube root of 7 will give you this answer. What I want you to see is that it doesn't work out nicely like to a 2, a 3, or a 4. It gives you some decimals, and we cannot see where these decimals is going. Last one. And this one it also doesn't work out very clearly gives you answer one comma with a lot of decimals going on here and that's the catch and that's the second group of each rational numbers I'm going to call these any roots that does not work out fully to a single natural number it gives you a number with decimals behind it then it's the second group of irrational numbers the last of the irrational numbers is this one if you get a sum that's written as a decimal and it doesn't stop so it goes on infinitely anyone and you do not know exactly where it is going then that will also be an irrational number look at this sum it says 1,2,3,1,7 I see no pattern here and I see three dots here that means it just goes on forever it's actually happening over here and it's also happening over here but this one is separately seen by me so this one says I've got a decimal and I don't know where it's stopping and I don't know where it's going sounds a little bit stupid but this is the way it works these, this is the third set. So we got one, pi, two, roots that works out with decimals in the answer, and then any decimal that I get that doesn't stop, and I don't know where it's going. Now the ones you have to be what that you must watch out for that can get us confused. The first one is a friend of pi. In other words, I'm going to write them down, ones that we are used to working in many schools. Um, just watch this. We as teachers usually tell you that if you are working out any questions about circles, circumference, or area, replace the pi with 3,14 or replace the pi with 22,7. All depends on which part of the world you are and which school you are and what your teacher's background is. But usually this is what we replace pi with and this is. But remember now, this is not pi and this is not pi. This is a rounded off amount that we replace pi with. If you put pi in your calculator, you will see it's 3,14 with a lot of decimals going on, like this problem that we mentioned over here. So this is a rational number. Of course, it stops. We don't know where it's going. And this is a rational number from the definition of rational numbers, which I'll give to you now. So these two, although we replace by, by them in sums that we do, are rational, rational, irrational. Please don't get this group mixed up with this group. These are all rational numbers. Let me explain what I mean. This first sum actually, this first number actually means 
naught comma three 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 and you ask it goes on forever that's what recurring means but we know where it's going in my little method so now that we know we're going to go down three 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 here so it's going to be rational let's look at this one quickly this stripe means the four seven will recur this dot over here and here means the one seven and the three will, will recur different ways of writing in different textbooks we're going to first talk about this one quickly there it is this means one comma four seven four seven four seven and also goes on infinitely but we know where it is going we can understand that so this one we don't know where it's going this one we don't do know where it's going so this is rational 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 numbers the stronger kids and the teachers will understand that these numbers can be written as a fraction which i'll explain now and that is the definition of a rational number but i learn this little method and it guides me through the questions we're not going to write down any numbers that these rational numbers i've mentioned them to you already if you go to the number line pull out all the irrational numbers which is ugly looking numbers then the rational numbers will all the numbers that's left we're going to call these numbers fractions in my language so any number that can be written as a fraction that will be rational numbers the formal definition that only engineers and people who want to get an A in maths really needs to know is that a rational number is any number that can be written in the form of A over B where both A and B are integers you need to know what integers means and of course the bottom is not allowed to be zero that is the formal definition a rational number is any number that can be written in the form of A over B where both A and B are integers it's confusing if you have to try and memorize this so that's why I taught you the shortcut Let's look what irrational numbers then is. One sort of formula or definition of way of explaining what irrational numbers are is every irrational number contains a non-recurring, so it can't be the recurring guys, and a non-terminating decimal. That means it has a decimal that goes on, it is not terminating, that means it goes on forever. And then the other way around, if it is non-terminating and non-recurring, then it is an irrational number. If this definition is too complicated for you to remember, just leave it. And remember that I said those three numbers that I mentioned, those three types of numbers, they are the irrational ones, and all the others will be rational, except for one exception that I will mention now. But like I said before we go there, remember that when usually when you see the word rational numbers, they mean fractions in maths. And then irrational numbers, you need to know what the difference is. Well, it's, it's not fractions, but what is it then? The last group is then the non-real numbers. The non-real numbers is not part of our syllabus, but you still need to understand who they are. They are only the following. It's important that you understand this word. Non-real numbers are numbers that if you have a square root or a fourth root or a sixth root, this number over here in the tick must be an even number. So we call it an even root. And there is a minus underneath. Then it's called non-real numbers. That's numbers that we are not working with in the school syllabus up to grade and including grade 12. We just need to understand that if this happens, we're going to call it non-real. So that is, this must be even numbers, but the negative underneath is non-real. Just watch out for the problem now. I only took one example. If it's an odd number over there, there may be a minus over there because minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4 times minus 2 gives you an 8 again. But if you times a minus 2 with a minus 2, you're going to get a plus, so that can't go in there. If you times a minus, times a minus, times a minus, times a minus, four times, you can't get a minus underneath here either. So if it's an odd number here with a minus, allowed. Total normal sum, this is an integer, rational, whatever you want to call it. Only these ones with even roots are the non-real ones with the minus underneath. And just remember, the stronger kids after grade 10, from grade 10 on, this is not... And non, we do not know if this is non-real or real as it stands. Because that minus is loose, that x could be a minus on its own. So that means we could have a minus and a minus will make a plus. So it has to be a number over here with a minus, then it's non-real. This could be real or non-real. We're not going to go that road now. To finally recap, natural numbers indicated with an n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Whole numbers is the natural numbers with naught. I'm not going to mention it again. Integers are all these numbers we just mentioned, and then all the numbers to the left of that without fractions, minus 1, minus 2, and so on. Then 
we explained that irrational numbers are these weirdy ones, the three types that I showed you by the square roots that doesn't work out with that works out with decimals and it doesn't stop. And then we have that at decimals that we don't know where it's going, it keeps on going. Then the rational numbers are all the list. These two groups together gives us the real numbers. That's everything you people know, including this baddies. And then non-real is the ones I explained last. That's square roots with a minus underneath. And that is the theory on these numbers that we need to understand to understand the next sums and other sums we want to do in mass. Enjoy. It's not difficult.